this video is for people like me who are in who are in IT support, who are in tech, who need to be able to advise their customers, their bosses, their their staff, or their friends who may inquire of them. So, what would you think about the multi um, WhatsApp multi device? What would you advise? How could it be used? Are there any pros and cons? Sometimes we should be careful what we wish for. <laughs> I feel like this about the new multi-device WhatsApp. Definitely, I was one of the advocates for it. Yes, I want, I want, I want. Yes, that's what I used to think. But now, after a number of years of using WhatsApp and being a very techy kind of person, I'm wondering whether we shouldn't have to be careful what we wish for. All that glitters is definitely not gold. So before WhatsApp brought out this multi-device WhatsApp, they did actually have another really cool feature that allowed you to have two WhatsApps. And that was the dual WhatsApp. I love the dual WhatsApp. And when it came out, I stopped asking for the multi-device WhatsApp. Why? The whole reason for me for having two WhatsApp was that I had two kind of a personas or identity I needed to exist as and I would rather both identities have separate WhatsApp so that there was no confusion say for instance one was for family and one was for my IT support activities I would rather they be separate so that I'm not sending IT support messages to accidentally to personal people and personal people's messages accidentally to um, business people it would be terrible so the dual messenger, I met it for the first time when I when someone gave me a Samsung. Now on there, if you check out this video, you will see that I show you the dual WhatsApp feature on my Samsung, and I am thrilled with it. It allows you to have oh, it allows you to have two WhatsApp application on one phone, provided you have two numbers. It was a fantastic feature, and I really loved it. Now they're bringing out the multi tip multi-device app WhatsApp, which truly, as I said before, I wanted. However, in the times we're in, with the issues we face, I now am kind of not so sure it's a good feature. Let's continue. What is WhatsApp multi-device? Well, WhatsApp multi-device is basically when you can have one WhatsApp account with the same number on two or more phones. It's definitely new. How's this going to happen? Well, it involves having the original phone, the phone where you actually downloaded WhatsApp the first time, where you have been, which you have been using all this time. You will need to link it to any other phone that you want to actually carry that same account. Any alternate phone that you are going to link to the original is going to be called a companion phone. Now, the beauty of this new system is apparently the fact that once you have linked the second or the third or the fourth phone, because you're allowed up to four additional devices, including phones, whereas before it used to be tablets, PCs and maybe laptops, now it's actually phone to phone. Once the phone has been linked, it's no longer than it's going to be just doing a mirroring, i.e. showing what's on the original phone on these companion phones, no, it's actually going to be able to work independently. You'll be able to be, that phone will be able to be directly connected to the WhatsApp account and to WhatsApp, and you'll be able to do the same things you would normally do on a standard WhatsApp account. Apparently, Meta and or Facebook have taken a lot of time to kind of suss this out. Apparently, they're using some new security technology to ensure that the end-to-end -end encryption that you get in a standard WhatsApp account is it continues to perform in that same way, almost like a cloned account on the new device. It's actually an account that works with the same end-to-end -end encryption. So once you have linked it, it's almost like it bundles up a copy of your messages and whatever else you have in the original WhatsApp account and it sends it through an encrypted pipe all the way to the new device where it's unpacked and installed. So that when you flip up that phone, it's ready to go, it's working. So 
all the features on the f on the f or I shouldn't say all most of the features should be available on the companion phone. Now, when that um, synchronization occurs in most phones, most things should be available. But as you can imagine, and if you know tech to any degree, you know that going across phones, i.e. from an Android droid to an iPhone, interoperability issues might and compatibility issues may pop up. So you might not get exactly everything that you have from one phone to the other, but essentially you get most of it. Um, another feature of this, and I think this is probably a security feature, though I'm skeptical and I'll tell you why later, is the fact that the original phone, the very first phone that you downloaded and you started using WhatsApp on, the one that you use as the master for linking all the rest, that phone has to be active. If it is not active for more than 14 days, they immediately log out all the companion phones. I don't know, and I'll have to check whether it actually also logs out of the main phone, main phone. But that's something that, it's a security feature, but mm, I have some reservations on that. So, what are the benefits of this multi-device WhatsApp? Clearly, there are some benefits, especially if you look at team situations. Number one, if you run an IT support team and you have only one IT support number, this is cool. It means that all your IT support staff can interact with the IT support WhatsApp account on their different devices and deal with the queries. There is a flip side to that. We'll deal with that in the negatives. Also, if you are a concerned parent and your child is just beginning her forage into instant messaging and you want to make sure you keep them safe, I kind of see this kind of feature as being very useful for that. I'm not sure it was intended for that, but I do see it as a useful feature. End-to-end -end encryption, companion phone, they don't mirror, but every time a message is, anything changes on, en on the WhatsApp, whether it be on the companion or the original, the other device gets updated. So how is this useful? Well, if you just have a child who's just beginning to get into instant messaging, they want a WhatsApp on their phone, you could actually give them a companion WhatsApp to your original WhatsApp and then you can just monitor their progress until it's almost like having training wheels on a bike. You give them the companion device with the WhatsApp on it and you just watch them for a little while to ensure that they're using WhatsApp wisely and they're not getting any creepy people com coming up on them in their WhatsApp. So that's another way to do it. Anything that involves teamwork, WhatsApp, WhatsApp multi-device is going to be cool. Also, if you're a person who by day you are a high-powered techie who deals with numerous people and you have a phone for work and your WhatsApp is ting ting pinging along there, but by evening you are a sensible down-to-earth parent who really doesn't want all these phone calls from all your clients coming through in the evening, but you do need to keep an eye on the WhatsApp messages, then by day you'll have your business phone or your day phone, and by night you can easily link it and transfer to your night phone and have your WhatsApp on it. And you're able to keep monitoring the situation without having all the negatives of a business phone at night where people can call you anytime, anywhere. Does WhatsApp multi-device have any negatives? Yes, I think it does. Four points I'm going to make. One is on accountability issues. The other one is security. Next one is cross compatibility. And the final one is lockout ability. You know, I like my ability. So let's deal with the first one, accountability. Now, all well and good if it's you that's using the multi WhatsApp multi device and it's your devices that you are flipping across from one to another, there is no problem. Just don't leave that device anywhere where it can be accessed by anyone else. Because if you do, 14 days is the lockout period. If the, if the um, primary or the original phone with the original WhatsApp is inactive for more than 14 days, that's the only time they'll lock you out unless you physically decide to go and unlink that phone. But if you didn't and that your your companion phone got into someone else's hands and they happen to also be able to open it that does not bode well 
for your identity, for your information, for your security. So that is one of the issues you need to consider in terms of security and securing yourself. That 14 day period of lockout is scary for me. It's scary because if anyone else gets a hold of your phone on WhatsApp, they can basically mimic you. That's as good as being at, as having someone um, break into your account and be pretending to be you. Not the greatest thing. And that's where the lockout ability also scares me. Now, if you've ever been on, on Facebook, and I know most of you have Facebook, um, one of the features that so irritates me on Facebook is the fact that yes, they are trying to protect me, their user. But sometimes when you forget the password or you're not quite sure, it's been a long time since you've used the password, they now say you have to verify yourself before you can log back in. And then it takes ages and then they start, lock, they, when you get anything wrong or you can't verify yourself, you're now locked out of your account. And sometimes for some people, this has been permanently, or there are features that they constantly, dis, they keep disabled until they figure that you want to verify yourself. All this can be stressful. And if you built your platform on any of these social media media yeah. systems, then you need to be very careful. You need to be very careful because it is very possible and it is very easy to be locked out of them. So going back to WhatsApp multi-device, what happens when they figure that, okay, one of, there has been some kind of uh, break into one of your phones, maybe your companion device or your original. Are they locking everybody out or are they just locking the companion devices out? Or, or are they locking the companion devices out and the primary device? And how do you re-verify? How is it just a matter of me giving you your phone number or am I going to have to give you Bible and verse, passport, driving license and all of that? So that concerns me because I know how stressful it is to do that. And many people are wary of doing that because there's never a person on the other end. They always want you to upload it to some space in the sky with no one verifying that it's them or that they've received it or that they will protect your privacy. Now, I talked about other people being able to, in teams being able to have the same, same WhatsApp on different phones. And it's a cool idea. Imagine a director, if you've ever worked with high net worth people, directors or VIPs, they usually have a number that their PA also monitors for them and filters the information through for them. So can, so this multi-device with the primary and the companion would work well in their scenario. But there is also the issue of who will take accountability? Is the WhatsApp going to show that even though it's on the companion phone, that it was the PA that was answering and not the, not the real owner of the phone. In a team situation, will the team members' names be appear on the WhatsApp, even though it is a companion phone or a primary phone? I don't know how all that works. And hopefully over the next few months, these issues probably be a no brainer for most of you to find out. And they've probably been solved already. I'm just worrying unnecessarily unnecessarily so that's the accountability now with cross compatibility to me when things are going across to different um platforms from ios to android or from ios to windows i always feel that there is some room for weakness because you're only as strong as your weakest link so that com cross compatibility issue is not a great worry but does it pose any window of weakness that people can can make use of that's all i need to say on that the main thing is the 14 day issue does give me room for concern when you imagine that the biggest flaw to personal security is social engineering. And if anyone is able to social engineer an opportunity to have your phone unlocked, be it a companion or a primary, it bodes serious. Issue. And if you have some feedback for me on this video, or if you can answer some of my question, or if you're even from WhatsApp itself, and you feel that you want to take me up on some of the issues I've raised, please post in the comments below. But yes, finally, we've got what we want. <laughs> but I wonder, let me know if it's really what we want.